With this formation, it's all about the flow, the momentum. Once your players get going, you find your team in such good areas that it's just too difficult not to score a goal. So the 3-1-4-2 is basically the same formation as the 3-5-2, but instead of having one cam, you're gonna have two cams going forward and building up the play for you, which makes this formation one of the best attacking formations in the game. So without further ado, let's talk about the tactics for this formation. We go balanced, balanced, direct passing. We keep it nice and compact in the back with 32 defensive width. And a depth of 51, you know, this formation has a bit of a pressure play built in with it, so we don't want to go crazy with the depth. And I would usually go wider in attack than 38 with a formation like this, but my wingers are on a special instructions that just wouldn't work like that, so we stick with 38. Players in box on 7, we're not messing around, we want this formation moving and we want it to overload the attack, and it will. Corners and free kicks though, on whatever your preferences are. I have them on 2 and 1. Now let's get to the most important part, which is the instructions. And keep in mind, we're gonna be making this formation defend like a 4-4-2, not a 5-3-2. So this is gonna be ultra attacking. One of your strikers is basically just on stay central. The other striker is on stay central and get in behind. Very standard so far. The getting behind striker should be your best finisher and the other one should be your playmaker. Now pay attention here cause this one instruction is gonna make this setup uniquely powerful. My left mid is on comeback on defense, stay wide, come short and stay on edge of the box for crosses. Come back on defense because Rolfo is gonna defend as my left back when we're defending in a 4-4-2. And Kafu is gonna defend as our right back, so make sure to place your players correctly here. Stay wide and come short is gonna make sure we always have a wide outlet who's always free to receive a ball. And stay on edge of the box because she's gonna act as my advanced fullback. I don't want her getting inside the box. This way we won't be getting countered like crazy and she will transition back to defense way faster. Next up is the right midfielder and you shouldn't play a fullback here, this should be an out and out attacker. The instructions is gonna be on stay forward, cut inside, get in behind and get into the box for crosses. Remember, so many players have their left back on balance, so by having your right mid on stay forward, you're gonna have crazy counter attack opportunities. And even if not, this player is always gonna act as your third striker. Now this is my favorite position in this game. The right center mid who's gonna be like my right cam is gonna stay on edge of the box, free roam and cover center. The left center mid aka the left cam is gonna be on stay on edge, free roam and cover wing. Remember, the left center mid is gonna defend as our left midfielder so we need to have this player on cover wing. But let's talk about the right center mid again, the one with the cover center. Havertz is the perfect player for this role. I want someone who's got the weak foot and I want someone who's got finesse shot plus. The combination of stay on edge of the box and cover center just puts this player on the perfect position for the finesse shots. So if you have someone like that in your team, it's just mwah, perfection. By the way, if you want to switch the instructions for the left and the right side, feel free to do so. Just make sure you mirror every instructions and you're gonna be good. Your CDM should be tall, powerful and amazing with passing. Like almost all of your early build up play is gonna go through this player, so he should be able to contribute the ball to everywhere on the pitch. The instructions is cut passing lanes, stay back while attacking, cover center and deep line playmaker. We're not gonna touch anything on the center backs, just make sure your right center back is your right back. And the goalkeeper as always is gonna be on comps for crosses and default. Let's get to some gameplay. We start things off with a brilliant goal from Havertz. As I said, the right center mid is gonna be so involved in the attacking plays. I'm loving Havertz on this role, I feel like this is the best place to play him. The 3 one 4 is an amazing formation at many things, especially now that everyone has a crazy team full of full meta players. It's the perfect time to switch out of that boring 4-3-2-1. Usually, the downside to these type of formations 
would be players not having enough stamina, not having good enough passing, you can't connect players in the attack, etc. But with all these team of the season cards out with maxed out stats, three at the back formations are at their most powerful time. Having so many runners up top and just outnumbering your opponent makes your attack flow unpredictably. Like, you have so many options that your opponent will never know which side to cover. And shooting so many players high up the pitch makes this formation amazing for pressure play. It's happened to me, you, everyone. You're trying to pass out the back, you lose the ball to press and concede an easy goal. Well, this is how you can score those easy goals. And that's why I didn't go too high with the depth. Pressing with the 3-1-4-2 is already so strong. Like, you wouldn't have to sacrifice your defensive stability with going too high with the depth. And even if you don't win the ball back, the counter against you won't be deadly. You always have four players staying back at all times. Anyway, if you have the right players to play this formation, I definitely encourage you to give it a try. That's it for today's episode everyone, thank you so much for watching, please leave a like and subscribe, it would help out the channel massively. This is the end of this video and hopefully I will see you on the next one.